Everybody that I've been talking to here in Tianjin at the World Economic Forum Summer Davos uh, says words are fine, words are good, and that's what we got from Li Qiang, the premier, yesterday in the keynote opening uh, speech. Now it's going to have to translate into action, both on the part of a more welcoming regulatory framework in China, but also by companies and governments abroad who say, all right, the de-risk in China has happened, and we can now maybe more safely go into China, as FDI had fallen, of course, in the beginning part of this year on a number of different risks. The U.S. talks about de-risking its supply chain, obviously, from China. But companies, that was the pitch Li Chang made yesterday to leaders of companies that come here, some 1,500 attendees, both domestic as well as foreign, that China is open for business and wants to attract and is a welcome uh, place for their investment. Again, we'll have to see how this translates. Are we witnessing the unraveling of China's economic miracle? For decades, China was the envy of the world, a seemingly unstoppable force with economic growth rates that left other nations in the dust. Under President Xi Jinping's leadership, the country pushed forward with confidence, positioning itself as a global superpower destined to eclipse the United States. But today, we're seeing something very different. Global investors, who once viewed China as the golden goose of emerging markets are now fleeing. Billions of dollars are being pulled out of the country, and Xi's ambitious economic plans are teetering on the edge of collapse. As Xi's iron-fisted rule over China's economy backfired, leaving the country vulnerable and investors scrambling for the exit? Or is this just a temporary setback for a nation that's too big to fail? Stick around, because this is no small economic hiccup. This could be the beginning of a global shift that changes everything. For the better part of the last decade, China has been the go-to destination for foreign investment. Its booming factories, rapidly growing middle class, and massive infrastructure projects attracted billions of dollars in foreign capital. China's rise was considered inevitable, and its economy was supposed to power the world into the future. But now, in a dramatic reversal, foreign investors are withdrawing funds from China at a record pace. The numbers are staggering. In the second quarter of this year alone, Investors pulled out a jaw-dropping piece $12 billion, $14.8 billion, marking one of the most significant capital outflows the country has ever experienced. These figures, reported by China's own state administration of foreign exchange, indicate a seismic shift in global confidence toward the world's second largest economy. This marks only the second time since 1998 that more foreign capital has left China than entered it. What's even more striking is the speed at which this exodus has taken place. In the first three months of the year, China saw a net inflow of $10 billion, a stark contrast to the massive outflows just a quarter later. So what went so catastrophically wrong? And why are global investors, who once viewed China as a safe bet, now racing to pull their money out? At the heart of this financial crisis lies a mix of geopolitical tensions, domestic economic struggles, and growing fears that China's best days might already be behind it. For years, China was seen as the new frontier for businesses and investors alike, offering untapped potential and enormous profits. But in 2023, things took a drastic turn. As tensions with the United States escalated, investors began to realize that the risks of investing in China were far greater than they had anticipated. The U.S.-China trade war, which began under the Trump administration and continued under President Biden, cast a long shadow over the future of foreign investments in China companies that once looked to China as the manufacturing hub of the world began to rethink their strategies. Many Western businesses have started nearshoring their production moving factories out of China and into countries like Vietnam, Mexico, and other lower risk markets. This strategy aims to reduce the exposure to China's volatile geopolitical situation and ensures more stable supply chains. As Duncan Wrigley, chief China economist at Pantheon Macroeconomics put it, foreign investors are selling assets and exiting China or pulling profits out of China. The sentiment is clear for many businesses. The risks of continuing to rely on China have become too high. Geopolitics isn't the only factor driving this dramatic exodus. China's domestic economy is facing its own set of challenges that are causing widespread concern among investors. One of the most significant problems is China's ongoing property crisis. Once a cornerstone of the country's economic growth, the real estate market has been in freefall for years, eroding the wealth of millions of Chinese citizens. The collapse of major property developers, such as Evergrande, is shaking confidence in the housing market and triggered a broader economic slowdown. As a result, Consumer demand in China has been severely weakened since the country reopened after its stringent COVID-19 lockdowns. Before the pandemic, China's burgeoning middle class was driving robust domestic consumption, which in turn fueled the broader economy. But now, after years of lockdowns, economic mismanagement, and a housing crisis, Chinese consumers are holding onto their money more tightly than ever before. According to Wrigley, consumers generally have been downgrading their purchases by buying cheaper stuff the days of China's consumer boom appear to be over, with citizens opting for frugality over big-ticket spending. Even in sectors like tourism, which had shown signs of recovery, spending levels are far from where they were pre-pandemic. 
This sharp decline in domestic consumption is one of the reasons why Beijing has resorted to cutting interest rates in a desperate bid to stimulate growth. However, this move appears to have backfired. Unlike other major economies, which have been raising interest rates to combat inflation, China has been going in the opposite direction. The logic behind Beijing's strategy is clear. By lowering interest rates, the government hopes to encourage borrowing and spur economic activity. But the reality has been much different. Investors are increasingly wary of putting their money in a country where the returns are shrinking. Lower interest rates mean less attractive yields for cash investors. And the renminbi, China's currency, has plummeted to historic lows against the U.S. dollar. Max Zingland, chief economist at the Mercator Institute for China Studies, echoed these concerns, stating, The pipeline of new investments into China is drying up. The renminbi's weakness, coupled with declining interest rates, has significantly reduced the attractiveness of investing in China. What was once a bustling market with sky-high returns has now become a cautionary tale for global investors. Well, President Xi Jinping's decision to reshape the world's second largest economy has upended the lives of millions of ambitious Chinese professionals. We're talking about high-paying industries including finance, consumer technology, property now out of favor. Geopolitical tensions are expected to rise further in the coming months, especially as countries like the European Union begin to take a harder stance against China's economic policies. The EU is set to vote at the end of October on whether to impose new tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, a move that could further damage China's struggling automotive industry. If these tariffs are approved, it could lead to a significant reduction in China's exports to the European market, hitting the country's economy even harder. Zinglin warns that this could have devastating consequences for China's already weakened investment pipeline, as companies shy away from committing new capital to a market increasingly seen as hostile to foreign businesses. As the tide of foreign capital flows out of China, Chinese companies are also moving their money abroad. Between April and June, Chinese firms invested a record $71 billion overseas, an 80% increase from the previous year. The fact that Chinese businesses are investing more abroad than ever before suggests that even domestic companies are losing confidence in their own economy. Combined with the massive foreign capital outflows, China experienced a record net outflow of $86 billion in direct investment in just three months. This massive capital flight has left the Chinese government scrambling to find solutions. President Xi Jinping, who has often portrayed himself as a strong man capable of leading China through any crisis now finds his leadership in question. His administration's attempts to revive the economy through interest rate cuts, infrastructure spending, and other stimulus measures have failed to halt the outflow of capital. The once unquestionable faith in China's economic resilience is now being seriously challenged, and Xi's grip on power may be weakening as a result. The consequences of this crisis extend far beyond China's borders. As the world's second largest economy, China's slowdown will undoubtedly have a ripple effect on the global economy. Countries that rely heavily on Chinese exports or imports will feel the sting of China's economic troubles, while global markets may experience increased volatility as investors look for safer havens. The fact that China is both a key player in global supply chains and a massive consumer market means that any prolonged economic downturn will have far-reaching implications for the rest of the world. Is this the end of China's economic rise or just a temporary hiccup? That's the trillion dollar question. Many experts believe that China's growth model, which has relied heavily on state directed investment and export driven manufacturing, is no longer sustainable in the current global environment. With geopolitical tensions rising, domestic consumption shrinking, and foreign investors fleeing, it seems increasingly likely that China's economic slowdown is not just a short term blip, but a long term trend. But the real question is whether Xi Jinping can turn things around. His grip on power has allowed him to centralize control over China's economy in ways that previous leaders could not. Yet this very control may now be working against him. In an increasingly complex global economic environment, Xi's rigid, top-down approach may be out of step with the flexibility and innovation required to navigate China out of this crisis. What happens next could reshape the global economic landscape for years to come. Investors are voting with their wallets and right now, they're voting to leave China the world is watching closely and the stakes could not be higher. Stay with us because this is a story that's only just beginning to unfold. The fate of China's economy and by extension, the global economy hangs in the balance. If you're as shocked by these developments as we are, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to stay updated on the latest twists and turns. This story is far from over and you'll want to be the first to know what happens next.